Ladies and gentlemen, you are about to see The Naked City. I'm Bert Leonard, the producer. As you see, we're flying over an island, a city, a particular city. And this is a story of a number of people, and a story also of the city itself. It was not photographed in a studio, quite the contrary. The actors played out their roles in the corridors and wards of a great hospital, and on Welfare Island in the East River, and on the Queensboro Bridge at 59th Street. Only at night, late, when the civic clang is stilled, can you truly hear the sound of the city's people. Only then are the long rhythms that pound throughout the day at last subdued. In this backwater of silence, human heartbeats can be heard if you listen louder and more insistent than any riveting. And every emotion is raw, exposed by the surgery of night. Fear becomes more fearsome. Desperation even more desperate. Mrs. Halloran, I brought my husband. Oh, yes, we expected you hours ago. Well, I, I was hoping we'd get through the night without, but he seems much worse. Oh, well, don't you worry, Mrs. Halloran. We'll handle it. Jim. Jim? All right, come with me. I know you're in good hands now. Just be honest with the doctors, darling. Tell them the things you... you can't tell me. We'll go this way. And when you get back, you'll be well. I know you'll be well. Have I done the right thing? The only humane thing. Why, I've seen hundreds of men go up those stairs. Far worse than your husband, Mrs. Halloran. We'll give him back to you, bright as a new penny. You'll see. Pretending is too much to ask of anyone. This is Dr. Miller, Janet. Mrs. Halloran? The good doctor, superintendent of the hospital. Outside of the police department and yourself, he's the only one to know what we're about here. It's worse than he told me, isn't it? He's been committed to our disturbed ward. These are patients who are being treated for various mental disorders. But I'd say that they're no more or no less violent than people on the outside. There's no other way? Janet. A poor, frightened little patient, a man named Watkins, was strangled in that ward last week. He was a witness we needed badly in the Tulio trial. We tried everything short of this to find out who did it. All the time I stood in the hospital with Jim, I kept thinking it could be worse. It could be he wasn't there just to do a job, but he was really there. Dan, don't you think I ought to drive Mrs. Halloran home? I'll be right back. That's a good lad. You do that, R. Carroll. Don't worry, Janet. Dan won't be leaving Welfare Island till he brings that boy of yours home again.
that boy makes one mistake, Lieutenant, if anyone suspects that he's simulating an illness, or that he's a police officer. I know. Now, Halloran, remember everything Dr. Miller told you. It's harder to act insane than you think. Can you deceive these men? The psychotics, the paranoiacs, the schizophrenics, the psychoneurotics? One thing you know, one of these men is as sane as you are. Manic depressive. Time to sleep. Young. He's already got a wife, Peachy Pie. Would you like to try to sit down this morning, Mr. Brickwell? You know very well I can't. Let me help you. Be careful. How would you like it if your legs were made of glass? Good morning, Mr. Halloran. Did you rest well? Mr. Morgan, this is Mr. Halloran. Would you see that he meets the others? Of course. Mr. Halloran? Do you think that you belong here? Well, I... I don't care. Let me give you some good advice, my friend. Humor anyone here that you think is acting strangely. Just don't humor yourself. Now there, that's Greer. He likes to punch people. They bring a bag in every day at three, and he punches it for an hour or so. And there's Romaine. He'll take the fillings out of your teeth if you don't watch it. Pure klepto. And Brisson. We try to protect him from himself. He doesn't care much for living. And Parker. We don't like Parker. He's a bully. Stay away from him. You're wondering about me. I'm about ready to leave the hospital. I'm well again. You see, whenever I feel myself slipping, I simply commit myself until I'm better. My partners carry on while I come here for help. You see, I have a law firm. Good morning, gentlemen. Mr. Halloran. Halloran, come on. In there. <sighs> That's like walking on hot coals out there. Mm -hmm. Come in. Sit down. Relax a minute. So. <sighs> Thanks. At least we got you in here successfully. Nobody suspects you're anything but the real thing. Well, thank you. Well, Doctor, I've got to find out which one of those men out there has the physical strength to have strangled Watkins. Are you ready for that now? Yeah, I think so. Well, all right. But remember, when you go into a manic stage, that is, into a high, you're going to be meeting the others on their own terms. You're liable to make mistakes, so be careful. Hmm. Well, let's get at it. Oh, the bed we assigned you is the same one in which Watkins was killed. Oh, and incidentally, uh, I'm instructing Miss Kaufman to take you off the nighttime medication. I'll tell her we'll try you on normal sleep. There's a man out there named Morgan. 
I don't remember anything in his record about his being a lawyer. He's not. Oh? Not anymore. He was once. A brilliant defense attorney. His wife left him for another man. He thinks he killed her. Oh. Did he? No. That's not in the record either. He imagines that he strangled her. I'm the strongest man in the world. I can crush steel. I've been watching you. You're not so much. The strongest? Mr. Halloran, it would be better for all concerned if you said that you were the strongest except for one man. Who? Me. to be the most of anything, Mr. Halloran. Not the strongest, not even the most brilliant. A man on a summit is not something to look up to, he's something to topple. Would you care to try, Mr. Morgan? Everyone else has. Would you care to try, too? Dormitory. I'll get him. You're Mrs. Halloran, aren't you? You gonna get him out? Well, you better. You know why? They don't want to lose anybody. Four dollars a day the state gives them for each man. Four dollars a day for each one of us. And if we croak, they get everything. You don't believe me. Charlie, come here. Tell her how they mistreat us. They cheat on the food, too. What? They make a profit of $3 a day. $4. You think we're lying? I'm telling you it's the truth. That's how it is. Oh, I'm sorry, but I, I don't know what I can do about it. Get your man out of here quick. Save him before it's too late. Gentlemen, please. Mrs. Halloran's here to visit her husband. Well? Debbie's fine. She's been eating her vegetables. Well, I want her to be strong. You know, I'm strong. Darling, we're getting along fine. You mustn't worry about us. Have I been sick? Yes. Well, how could I be sick? I'm... I'm strong! Now, you... Now, all of you, you tell her how strong I am. Now, you, now, you tell her how strong I am. Mr. Hanson! You mess with me once more, son. You tell her how strong I am. Say goodbye to your wife, like a nice boy. They won't. Believe me, I, I keep telling them, but they won't believe me. I'll see you next week. Beats me how guys like you always get the lookers. There ought to be a law. says in there, Detective Halloran. Dirty cop! Parker. He's mine! No, we're all involved. 
Mr. Greer. Is it true? Is this true? I thought you were one of us. I tried to be kind to you. To make you understand how it is. He's a spy. We'll never get out now. Let me have him. No. Let me have him. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Don't just push a cop around. Not unless you want to get pushed back. I got too many buddies. You take this, Brickwell. You want to know he's a cop? You know. Me, I don't know. He has a right to speak. So why don't he speak? Look, there was a man. Jeremy Watkins, you remember him? Yes. Well, this was his bed. Last week, he was murdered in his sleep. Just before he was to be released. Just after he'd regained his senses. But we told them we know nothing. Maybe you don't understand why he was put in here in the first place. He was put in here because he'd witnessed a gang killing. Yes, they shocked him right out of his senses. Now, we needed him to testify. Now, we're not going to have hoodlums reaching into our hospitals. Do you understand the meaning of these words, Halloran? Furiosus furore, solum punitur. The madman is punished by his madness alone. Now, by your coming here, however valid your reason, you have brought the outside world inside. You have accented the excruciating difference which exists between us, hurt and humiliated and used us. And for this, you must be punished. Doesn't the law say, even the most insane man has moments of sanity. Mr. Morgan, I accuse you of being just as sane as I am. You also accuse me of killing Watkins? Well, have you ever killed anyone? <laughs> Look, I'm, I'm sorry I had to do that. <laughs> you know about my wife. Look, she's alive. You never killed her. I never killed her. Oh, no. Never killed her. Never killed her. Let me see. Stay in the mind. As far as children run. I made the best of them. and saw it, he told me. He can't talk. He did see it, didn't you, Brisson? He came in at night when, when everyone but you was asleep. Yes, he came in and, and did it so it would look like, like one of you had done it. Yeah, that's right. He never was here before Watkins was here. How much did Tulio pay you to do the job, Hanson? Who are you? Never you mind who I am. Hey, what is this? <laughs> Tell Dr. Miller, Detective Halloran's calling from Ward 10. Tell him to get in here fast. Spring 73100. Tell the dispatcher there to contact Lieutenant Muldoon. Tell him the man we're after is a ward attendant named Hanson. And tell him to block the auto bridge. If they move fast, he'll never get off the island.
5-3-6-2-2-1 and 9-0-6 report to 5-3-6 on Welfare Island. This is 5-3-6. <laughs> Check, but I found enough in there to tie him up with Tulio. I saw a man fall. Herbert, I do think we have aphids on our privet hedge. Oh, impossible. They can't fly this high. And that's your Queensboro Bridge, folks. 1,182 feet across the channel span. What they call a cantilever type. Finished in 1909. Nobody, not even a man like Hanson, should have to die out here on a morning like this. You know, sir, this may sound funny, but down there in that ward, people stick together. I know they're sick and need help, but somehow they seem to be helping each other, too. Well, I hope every one of them, Morgan, Greer, Blackwell, Crane, yes, even Parker, I hope they, they walk out of there someday, walk out free and well again. You know what I mean, sir? There are eight million stories in the naked city. This has been one of them. <laughs>